When I uh, welcome to the shortwave channel first, um, when I listen to WWV, um, I I can't help but have you know memories of of the good old days of when I was a teenager discovering all of this and and wondering what is this, what is this station giving time and what's that time universal time, what 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 is that you know. Well, I think I'm hearing uh, about Hawaii, Hawaii and Colorado on 10 right now. Um, and I remember listening to that on 15 and with the DX100 and 15 megahertz and tuning around and, and being amazed at, you know, a station giving time and later noticed how, first of all, it's extremely important um, when I got my Kenwood R5000, actually, it was extremely useful because the Kenwood R5000 had a slow drift that would make it off frequency slightly. You know, it's like maybe, you know, two, three, four, five, six hertz. And, and it shows, you know. Yeah, definitely hearing uh, Hawaii. Kind of interesting. So um, that little off, you know, I'm, I'm a crazy person. <laughs> so when the radio is off by maybe 7, 8, 10 hertz, which is not a lot, honestly, um, it drives me nuts because, you know, you would not have the perfect pitch in single sideband. Uh, it doesn't matter in AM mode because AM mode, you know, if you, even if you're, you know, 500 hertz off. Uh, it might be slightly noticeable by ear. I, I could hear it probably, but honestly, it doesn't change that much in terms of, of listening. But single sideband is different. It requires a lot of precision for the voice to be perfect. And especially for the music. If you guys listen to pirates, trying to tune the music of these pirates accurately is extremely difficult. And... Um, <clears throat> I started using, of course, the tones of WWV, putting it in the upper and lower sideband and using a plastic screwdriver to, you know, change a little pot inside the uh, potentiometer inside the radio and to put it back straight on frequency. And, and it would be okay for, you know, six months or a year uh, before I had to do it again. Um, so that, that, you know, that's where I, I saw how important these time signal stations are and and then, you know, um, I, I started taking, I, I need to find it. I must have it somewhere in a box. I had actually written down in a book all the solar flux index and maybe for two, two or three straight years and I made graphics in like graph paper to show the, uh, the sunspots and you could see the cycle go up and down in that three year was kind of interesting uh you know stuff you do when you're uh, when you're younger so i thought it was a good idea and uh so i have these things that are kind of nice and then you have the other time stations that you can find out uh, still quite a few countries have a time station uh, brazil argentina italy china uh, japan uh, of course there's uh canada chu there's wwv and wwvh uh, in the United States and Colorado and Hawaii. Um, so there's, you know, there's some DX to be done. Most of them QSL too. There's a Moscow time signal, RWM 9996, uh, 14996 and 4996 that, that could be heard. Uh, these are, are uh, kind of a little different. That day QSL also. So it's kind of nice, you know, when you hear that. Definitely hearing Hawaii on 10 uh, quite well, too. And let me check if... Uh, go, I'm going to go to CW... Oops, CW low. Oh. 
that uh, not receiving the RWM time signal at this time on 9996. Um, sometimes it does come in. Depends on propagation, of course. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk about those time signal stations is for testing propagation. Uh, you know, like for example, I hear Hawaii on 10 as well as Colorado. Uh, that would maybe want me to go on 30 meters FT8, just a little above on 10136. And call CQ because I know that if 10 goes to Hawaii, Chances are uh, 30 meters goes to Hawaii and maybe further it could go maybe to New Zealand or Australia or so on. And uh, depending on the propagation. So you can use these to actually see where propagation brings you. You know when you hear for example the RWM time signal on 9996 just below. Well you know that there's a path that's open up to Russia. So Europe and so on you, you know and some maybe some Nordic countries. Um, so you can use that and, and check out, you know, the propagation. Uh, and of course you can check out the propagation of the international broadcast bands. For example, if 10 megahertz goes up to Hawaii, uh, you might want to go and tune down and see what other signals you might have on say 31 meters shortwave. See if you can hear unusual stations that, that you might never hear. Um, you know, one that I was amazed the other day was, uh, 11905 Sri Lanka, which I haven't heard since. It was really good that day, and I've tried at least seven or eight times since. I haven't heard the 0200 to 0230 broadcast of the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. So it was kind of a very unique experience that day. So time signal stations are great to, to test propagation, so check it out. Of course, if you want to See if propagation is open on uh, high frequencies. You can uh, punch in 25, which is a WWV out in uh, in Colorado. So uh, that uh, is one that you can check out also. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.